Hello again, Michael Freeberg here from beautiful North Carolina, and today I have two products to review. The first is another Grünlika soap. This is the Troll. You may remember that I have used previously the Grünlika Mr. Charming, which was a licorice, uh, licorice soap. Um, they have sent me for review a full-size puck, which is a hard puck of this Troll soap. Uh, as you can see, a wonderful kind of a cool mottled green color. The scent on this is Oh, well, it's grape and bergamot, or as you can see listed on the label, bergamot and grape. So it has kind of a light, um, slightly bitter citrus undertone, and then a very fresh grape scent, like you've cut open a nice ripe green grape. That's the initial scent that you get, and then oh, just some citrus underneath it. And I really like how the color of that soap turned out. I have that pressed into the Captain's Choice loading bowl, which has those ridges. So what you do is you wet the bottom of the soap just a touch, press it into the bowl and just press it down and it is affixed in there, doesn't move at all. Very, very easy to do. That also prevents water from too much water, if any water seeping it underneath and water logging the soap. So hopefully that's worked out. Today's razor is a very generous gift on loan. It's a unicorn razor. You can no longer really get these. It is the BBS one from the Los Angeles Shaving Soap Company. Uh, there was a brief moment of respite when they had originally decided, decided that they were no longer going to manufacture these, they had come to an agreement with Wolfman that uh, they were done producing these and that James from Wolfman Razors was going to move on with a slightly different design of his own of his own making. Um, there was a brief moment where they relented, okay, we're gonna bring it back, and then it turns out the same or the next day. Now it turns out they're really, really done. So that is the end of those, no longer to be had. So let me just show you what the top cap looks like. As you can see, uh, sort of a plain design, but very deep, long posts for the uh, for the top cap there in the four corners and a nice long thread. The base plate has, and I think you, you I don't know if you've obviously in the Wolfman you can get those customized, but there's just two of the logos there from the LASSC. Um, and then as you can see, a very small profile for the head, very small, light, thin, really nice design on that. So. I'm going to be using in there a Gillette Silver Blue. That's the second shave on that blade. Let me go ahead and get that assembled. So yeah, when you put the uh, put the blade in, you can see just how nice those posts really work. It really just holds the blade in there. And then, because those blades are the uh, those posts are so long, and the base plate is so thin, it really just completely covers that and holds it in there. Let me just get that on there. There we go. I am going to use a washer. The handle, handle is this very, uh, very cool design, which sort of these diamond pattern uh, carved into the handle, which is deeply knurled on the diamond and then just plain, uh, plain for the rest of the handle. Nice, thick, and actually really relatively heavy. So this is an overall, the stainless steel razor, very good weight to it. The head, I'm going to tighten that up. So as you can see, there is definitely overhang there, which is probably my only knock against this razor, really, is that there is um, a bit of a, you know, the end tabs are exposed. There's a probably a good reason for that in some ways, just because of the size of the billet and how many heads you can cut out of it. But, uh, but generally speaking, I always like a design. If you can remove those, you can avoid having that all the better. Um, let me go ahead and get, uh, get my face wet. We'll start lathering up. Today's brush is going to be the Rod Neep the giant board that's been soaking in some, uh, some warm water for a few minutes. All right, let me wet my face. Go ahead and get the soap lathered up. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer about those razors no longer being produced, but it is what it is. You know, Wolfman already has an extremely, um, like a long backlog, I think, for anything but the, uh, but the Gorilla razors. And if you're on the wait list, we're on the wait list of the wait list to get a Wolfman, and then you also have the, the BBS one wait list, which I think was quite long, could have been a year or more before yours would come in. At a certain point, just have to uh, yeah realize that's that's probably not gonna last. So the BBS one, that's it, they're gone. And now move on to whatever is the next design that Wolfman will bring out, which I'm sure will enjoy tremendous popularity as well. All right, there's the soap. This is a in the scheme of things, a relatively simple soap. It's a coconut oil-based soap. Um, the only other sort of extra ingredient is jojoba. It lathers 
very easily. I'm going to be using, this is a relatively dryish brush. Um, I've underloaded and overloaded. The first day I thought I had underloaded because the brush just didn't look like there was really anything in there. Um, but in fact, there was plenty of soap in there. So this, this is very typical. What's happening now, if I take this off and you look at the brush, it looks like there's not much in there, but in fact, there's actually already quite a bit of soap. I'm gonna add just a touch of water to the surface of the soap, keep building the lather. And as you'll see, there'll be a lot of lather that will form around, um, around the puck. I'm gonna scoop all that off and use that as well. There we go, I think that's gonna be plenty. That looks like quite a bit already. So let me just scoop out. Man, that's already gut. Oh, let me just swap things around here for a moment. Yeah, there we go. So that's what I've scooped out of the uh, out of the loading bowl. I'm just going to position that in there. I'm now going to attempt once again to apply this lather to my face without too much of it dropping into the sink. So just wish me luck here. So far, so good. And this lather is like a lot of the a lot of the soaps I've used recently, where the initial lather already looks really good. It feels soft on the face. You can sort of feel how creamy and slick the soap is going to be, but it's really not ready yet. Definitely going to add water to this. You can see it just start to thin it out a little bit. Still a little pasty and dry, so. Time to add some water. Now there is lather all over the bottom of the brush, which I'll just scoop up as well. You can already see sort of a telltale sheen starting to build. Yep, starting to thicken up a little bit, but that still needs more water. You can just, it does, just doesn't sound right. All right, so sounds a little, a little airy and fizzy still somehow. So I've just dripped some more water into the brush. I'm just gonna sort of paint that in and then work it in. And that has settled down very nicely. Yeah, in the scheme of things, this is a relatively simple soap. You know, it isn't loaded with all kinds of super fats, but the chachawa does make quite a nice difference. And it is, as you can see, very easy to work with. No struggles at all in building a very nice, creamy, dense lather. Good slickness, too. All right. The scent is, I would say, mild off the, uh, off the puck and you don't really get much of a, of a blast or a hit uh, from it while you're shaving. So if you're looking for a strongly scented soap, this would not be the one. But if you're looking for kind of a nice, light, fresh scent, and you like fruit scents, good choice. All right, so this, as you can see, has a what I would consider to be a relatively flat um, blade edge, right? The blade is not that curved inside there, and there's also a fair amount of blade that is showing. So you should expect this to be aggressive but maybe not overly aggressive and first few shaves the only thing I really had to struggle with honestly was uh, dealing with the weight and the pressure because I hope that sound is coming through the razor has a beautiful really kind of a unique rasp to it but that rasp also, at least for me, and often with new razors, tends to lead to a bit of extra extra pressure because you feel like that rasp means there's more hair there. Just really watch it. You can feel the blade edge. but it feels like it is under very good control, which you might not expect from the way that it looks. 
in there. I mean, it looks like it's flat and there's not much holding it, but blade edge control is really very, very good. Soap is really doing a wonderful job. Very nice and dense, really holds together. Very easy in use and the handle just feels fantastic. It just has this, the, the knurling is just, it feels deep but not overly deep. It doesn't feel rough. It feels like it's really been, uh, you know, designed to just be held safely and securely. And what I really like about the razor is really the slimness of the head. Very, very nice design. You know, the exposure on the end tabs, I guess that's just sort of the nature of the beast. You know, some razors don't have that. Many razors do. It's just something to watch out for. All right, wow. Well, you know, as always, two days of growth. And it just tears through it. I'm gonna re-lather for the, across the grain. Still plenty of soap in the brush, as you can see. No issues with that. A very nice, really nice, slick feel as you apply it. There we go. As always, if need be, I will, of course, reload from the bowl for pass number three, but we'll see. All right, this is the across the grain. Again, this is one of those moments where for certain parts of the shave, that rasp, you just have to remind yourself, don't respond to that with extra pressure. Great combination of slick soap and a very nice, efficient razor. You know, it's very easy to see why people are so in love with these. Really nice, effortless part of the pass there. Yeah, for as simple a soap as this might be, I've really been quite happy with it all week. There's definitely a trend in the artisan soap market now, I think, to continue to push on the on the scent side, which may be in part because maybe we've reached the point of diminishing returns on the soap bases, which in some cases, or many cases, are already so good. You're really talking about particular face feel preferences and primarily, in this case, scent preferences. On the other hand, this is our nice hard puck of soap. It's going to last for quite a while. The scent is really pleasant. Performance is absolutely fine. No issues there. I think the other one is a is a like a Mr. Cool, like I think a menthol, sort of a uh, a mint scented menthol. Wow, man, that razor is just really having a go. Really, really nice. All right, 
Let's go for the against the grain pass. Let's see how much we can get out of the brush. It may require just a bit of a, see what we can squeeze out of it at the end. That one was for Ann Smith. Just gonna pull a bit of the extra soap out. There we go. Apply an extra bit to the spots where I normally have issues with razors, which is, of course, under the jawline. The upper, lower, and middle neck portions. Yeah, very nice. Just feels really slick as you're applying it. Okay, let me rinse off my hand. I'll just put that. There we go. Just not to lose too much of it. All right, final pass. This one will be against the grain. I have had two, and I mean like seriously legit BBS shaves this week. One of them took a bit of extra work, and because what I found is that normally, normally I might do a lot of buffing, certainly under here. That I don't think is really what this razor is suited for. So what I did was a very quick, uh, simple pass. Relathered and did some touch up under here. Really nice. Now, at least for me, on these more aggressive razors, what I find is that blade longevity is not at all what it is in the more mild ones. And my tendency is, like I'm sure like a lot of you are trying to eke out one more shave. Not a good idea with this razor. Three shaves on the Gillette Silver Blue and absolutely done. A really big fan, I gotta say, of the slim design on that head. Very nice, low profile, makes it very easy to get into the tight spots. All right, let's have a quick feel. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a very minor touch up. This worked out much better than trying to, uh, to buff in kind of a persistent way during the third pass. Time-wise, I don't think it really makes much of a difference, but in terms of comfort and closeness, definitely the better option. Beautiful. All right, stop right there. Soap is definitely very slick when you wet your face. Like there's a 
a very distinct slick layer left. Not very easy to rinse. Post shave, post shave is good, but nothing, nothing really extraordinary or outstanding. As again, the soap is only, I think, super fatted with one additional, um, one additional oil, the jojoba oil. But no real tightness, no real heat, just not quite as moisturizing as some of the other really super fatted soaps. Towel off. Remove the soap from my ears. Wow, see again, that is just a extremely close, very, very comfortable shave. Uh, that adding that fourth pass in for the cleanup rather than buffing makes all the difference with that razor. The combination of that soap and the razor is just fantastic. Just so slick, protective and easy to use. Okay, let's stop right there. Let's finish this off with another beautiful scent. L'Orange Noir from Mr. Fine at Fine Accoutrements. Ah, I'm using quite a bit because one, it feels really good going on. There's a tiny momentary sting from the alcohol, obviously. And then the menthol, as the alcohol recedes, the menthol begins to slowly build, but not build to one of those kind of eye-watering moments. This is, for me, it's just the perfect plateau on the, uh, on the menthol side. Cooling, but not over-cooling. Uh, and it's just, uh, just a fantastic, I love the scent and that stuff, just really good. I realize that in the scheme of things, it seems like just four ingredients, but four very nicely merged ingredients, fantastic scent, great face feel. Big fan of those aftershaves. All right, well, um, once again, very, very happy with that shave. Two days of growth obliterated. That, I think, is as close as one gets to a legitimate BBS without trying to overdo it, which I do not do. I don't recommend that you do it either. You know, you can push it, doesn't really ever pay off, my opinion. All right, let's go through the products for today. Number one, from Grunlika. This is the second soap of theirs that I've used. The first was the Mr. Charming, the licorice. This is the Troll, which is a bergamot and grape scented hard puck of soap, coconut oil based with jojoba oil as the primary uh, added fat. Um, I will try to show you again. It might be hard to see with the lather on top. A beautiful colored soap. I really love the kind of swirled or marbled look on the, on the hard soap puck. Very, very nice stuff. Just really enjoyable to use. Good slickness, good protection, no dissipation during the shave. In the scheme of things, pretty good post-shave. Really nothing spectacular, but but absolutely fine in that regard. Ah, uh, today's razor. I am going to get to use this for another week and then send it back. So next week's shave will be week number two with this. Um, so I can really get a very good, solid feel for it. Beautiful knurling on the handle. Just a wonderful, kind of unique looking design there. I love the shape of the head. The head design is just really well done. Very slim profile. The blade angle, although it looks flat, it turns out actually to be surprisingly comfortable. Very efficient in use. I haven't had a nick or a cut. I've had no real razor burn. Uh, even when I was over buffing, I felt like, yeah, that's more an issue of the, of the blade itself. That was just on the third day, and just not smart really. Beautiful razor, fantastic shaves, and now has ascended into the rarefied atmosphere of the epically ultimate unicorn razors. Never gonna be made again. Well, if you have it, keep it. Um, if you want one, I think you're gonna be hard pressed to find one. Today's aftershave, well, you just saw it, but I'll remind you anyway. The fine L'Orange Noir alcohol menthol scent. Just beautiful, simple aftershave. Really like it, smells fantastic, feels great. Even now, there's still a very nice, light, even cooling sensation from the menthol. All right, that's it. We've come to the end of the shave. Another beautiful, wonderful shave. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate the time you're taking to watch these. As always, please feel free to leave comments or questions against this video or any previous videos. Thank you again so much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.